Do you use the Google search engine? If you do, you really shouldn't. You really should consider using an alternative search engine because Google, they don't respect your privacy. They don't respect your security. They track everything you do when you use their search engine. So today I'm going to share with you nine alternative search engines that you should consider. So the first search engine we should talk about is DuckDuckGo. Now that is easily the most well known of the private search engines out there. If you're looking to get off of the more traditional search engines and get on to one that's more privacy oriented, DuckDuckGo seems to be the one that most people tend to use. It's well established and despite its kind of strange name, right? That's a very odd name, DuckDuckGo. <laughs> They've managed to make a name for themselves as far as the branding, you know, people know what DuckDuckGo is. Now, obviously, it doesn't have the same depth and reach as Google, for example. But then again, it's not tracking everything you do like Google is doing either. So DuckDuckGo, their claim to fame is that they anonymize your searches so that the data they're collecting from your searches, it's not really linked to you in any way. When you read up on DuckDuckGo, when you search through the website and through their terms and policies and everything, mainly they discuss what other search engines are doing, you know, hey, these other guys are doing all this bad stuff, but it's sometimes hard to figure out exactly what DuckDuckGo is doing themselves. It's only really when you get deep into some of their documentation that you learn that DuckDuckGo does actually save all your search queries. So if you look at the site, it, it actually tells you that they do save your searches, but they claim they don't save them in any personally identifiable way. So they're not storing your IP addresses. They're not storing unique user agent strings. Now, why is a privacy oriented search engine like DuckDuckGo saving your search queries? Uh, that's a good question. According to them, they're doing it because they need to aggregate this non-personal data to improve things like misspellings and things like that to serve better search results. Now, although DuckDuckGo is easily the most popular of these alternative privacy oriented search engines, a lot of people do have a problem with DuckDuckGo because they do save those searches. So anytime I mention DuckDuckGo on the channel, I always get bombarded with, hey, have you tried this search engine? Have you tried that search engine? And probably the one that I get recommended the most other than DuckDuckGo is startpage.com claiming it's the world's most private search engine right here on their homepage. Startpage.com has been around for a while, so it's well established and it does offer the option to perform searches through a free proxy server to add to your privacy if you so choose. Now, of course, using a proxy server does slow things down a little bit, but it doesn't slow things down that much. Startpage actually uses Google data it actually uses Google to perform the searches. So it has some kind of arrangement with Google where StartPage rips out all the tracking data between it and Google. Although they maintain the, the quality of those Google searches, they do it without doing any kind of tracking. They don't save anything that is identifiable in any way. Another search engine I've been getting recommendations about is Quant. I don't know much about this particular search engine. I've heard the name thrown around the last couple of years. It's been around for a while. It's another one of these privacy oriented search engines. This time, this one is based in France and it primarily sources its search results from Bing, where Startpage was primarily using Google as its source. I think DuckDuckGo uses Yahoo to source its search results. So Quant being based in France, in Europe, their data privacy protections probably are a little stricter because, you know, especially compared to the United States, there's more privacy laws over in Europe than we have in the U.S. Reading a little bit from their site, Quant, again, it promises to protect your user privacy. They claim there is absolutely no tracking and they claim that because they don't track you in any way, you will never get caught up in what is called the filter bubble. What that means is most search engines, they do track you. Google, for example, tracks you and you get caught up in a filter bubble because Google is trying to figure out what it is you're searching for to keep serving you better search results and especially to keep serving you better advertisements. So when you use a traditional search engine like Google, they're serving you the results that they think you want. So you get caught up in this bubble where you're never being presented with alternate views, alternative views to what you believe in. 
and you probably don't want that from a search engine. The next search engine I want to talk about is easily the most unique of the ones I'm going to discuss today, and this is Wolfram Alpha. Now, this has been around forever, and when you look at it, it's very old school, right? It's got a simple design. It almost, it's almost got categories, right? It's almost like a web directory in its front page design, but don't let that fool you. It's really a search engine, but it doesn't just perform searches. You can perform other tasks like mathematics. You see it's got these mathematic categories, elementary math, algebra, plotting, and graphics, calculus. You can actually enter equations in this thing and get an answer. It has financial calculators. You can get health information, you know, and you can search for people, places, dates and times, etc. And like any good privacy oriented search engine, Wolfram does not track your searches or collate any identifiable data about you. The next search engine we should talk about is Swiss Cows. Now, this is a different beast altogether. This is a very different kind of search engine. For one thing, it doesn't use other search engines to serve its results. It uses its own AI to deliver search results. A lot of the other search engines we're discussing today, they're drawing from Yahoo or Google or Bing, or they're a meta search engine that pulls in results from a multitude of search engines, not Swiss cows. Swiss cows claim they utilize machine learning and semantic searching to deliver those results. One unique aspect of Swiss cows is that they are very passionate about family friendly content. If I actually scroll down here, yeah, you get to a page where they talk about the importance of family friendly content. Now, they specifically say that they, quote, promote moral values, they, quote, hate violence and pornography, and they, quote, promote digital media education. So they re are really going to filter out a lot of more mature content. So that may be a plus or that may be a minus for you, depending on what you want out of a search engine. So I know some people are not going to like the fact that Swiss Cows filters out all the adult content. I know some of you, especially those of you with small children, you may see that as a really great feature. Next up is a meta search engine called Metagur uh, or Metagur. I'm, I'm not exactly sure exactly how to pronounce this thing. It is an open source meta search engine, hence meta in the name, based in Germany. Maybe that's why they've got the G-E-R in the name. Either way, whether it's Metagur, Metagur, it gets its search results from Bing, Yandex, Yahoo, and several other search engines because meta search engine means it's drawing results from a bunch of other search engines. It does have its own web crawler as well. Now, I actually did not know anything about this search engine until a few days ago when I was getting ready to make this video, but Metagur actually started way back in 1996. So this thing is 24 years old. Right now, it's being operated by a nonprofit organization that's founded in Germany. Similar to StartPage, Metagur, they convert their search request into anonymous queries through a proxy. So this provides the anonymous viewing option with all of its results. User IP addresses are truncated for privacy. So although user agent info is passed along to the search partners, Metagur does not actually utilize cookies or any other tracking methods. Next up on the list is Mojik. Now, unlike some of the other search engines we've talked about so far, Mojik is a true search engine. It has its own crawler. It is not just pulling search results from another search engine like most of the other stuff we've talked about. Right now, Moji claims they have an index of several billion pages. And what makes Moji a really attractive alternative search engine is the fact that it is its unique search engine. It's a true search engine. So if you really want complete independence from corporate data monoliths like Google, Bing, Yahoo, Mojik offers a really interesting alternative. They're very clear in their privacy policy. They claim that they don't implement any kind of specific user tracking. They do mention they keep some standard logs. Those logs contain the time of visit, the page requested, some referral data, and some browser information. They claim IP addresses, though, are not recorded except in rare circumstances, and in those circumstances, the IP is actually replaced with simple two-letter codes indicating your country of origin. And they say because they don't collect IP information that they remove any possibility of you ever being tracked or identified. Next up on the list is Gabiru. 
I hope I pronounced that right. I don't know anything about this search engine, but strangely enough, it's another one that's been around for a while. You can see protecting your privacy since 2009 right here on the front page. And it says it's an unfiltered private search engine. It uses Google for its search results, but it, of course, it strips out all the tracking data and everything before it gets to you. Now, the man that created Gabiru, the man behind the search engine, he says the reason he designed Gabiru in the first place was to have a search engine that works exactly like Google did back in the day, back in those idealistic days before all the tracking and the monetization and the data mining. And I, whether he has succeeded or not, I can't speak on that. I haven't actually used the search engine myself, but I am presenting it here just to give you guys another alternative. And the last alternative search engine I want to mention is Yacy. Now, this is really interesting. It distinguishes itself from everything else we've talked about in that it runs on a peer-to-peer -peer network and it's decentralized. It was created back in 2004 by a guy named Michael Christen, and it is entirely open source software. Now with Yacy, there's no central server, so the authorities, they can't go to the central server and seize any information or, you know, you can't be tapped in any way. This is probably the best option if you're serious about being private through your searches. I would strongly suggest Yacy. Now, Yacy is not a website. You don't go to like yacy.com and, and find a search engine. No, this is software that you download and install on your operating system. They do have packages available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. On Arch, I was able to get this installed. I can't remember if it was in the regular repositories or in the AUR, but it was very easy to install. Once you install it, you just open up a web browser and you point it to localhost at port 8090. That's port 8090. Now that is nine alternative search engines that are privacy oriented that you could replace Google with. Now I haven't used some of the ones in this list. I've only used a few of them and none of these have I really delved deeply into. I cannot promise you that these search engines aren't tracking you in any way, but I can tell you that for sure Google is tracking everything you do. Google is data mining you and you really need to get off of Google. So again, I strongly urge you guys to start using one of these private search engines. Combine it with a secure web browser, especially a free and open source web browser like Firefox or Brave. Or if you're really privacy oriented, the Tor browser. And if you're super privacy oriented, do all of this in a VPN. Now, I know some people are going to watch this and think that I'm part of the tinfoil hat club, that this is a lot to go through just to get a little extra privacy. But this is this is such a minor thing. Changing the default search engine in your web browser literally takes about five seconds. I don't think that's too much effort. But what do you guys think? If And if you guys know of some other privacy centric search engines that I don't know about or didn't talk about in this video, please recommend them. Tell me about them in the comments. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This episode was produced by Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, you wouldn't know about these nine alternative search engines. You wouldn't know about it. I'd also like to thank all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, they are responsible for the channel because, again, it's you guys, the community, that sponsor this channel. And if you'd like to support me, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.